Hello and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have a very special chronograph that we need to restore. We have this beautiful Vulcan. You can see, like, I love this vintage dial, the vintage patina on it. Don't, uh, just going to check first if this uh, chronograph is working and see uh, what type of work we need to do uh, on, this, uh, on this chronograph. Just winding the watch right now is a manual wind chronograph. Uh, we can see we have a, a sub-second on the on a left counter. Just checking the case there. Looking good. Actually, I like the lug on this, this shape of lug on this chronograph. Um, it's very nice, this vintage type of lugs. Just going to check now if uh, the rest is working. Yeah, we can change the time. Just check the chronograph. So what I like to do when I check the chronograph, I like to let it run for like a minute to see as well if the minute counter want to jump and uh, if there is anything wrong with uh, with the second end and you can see there it's quite smooth actually the, the second end so looks good and uh, when it comes to a minute yeah we have the jump there so perfect and uh, the next thing is to check as well if the reset function is working fine yeah it looks good looks good as well I'm just going to remove the strap before we open the, the case back and see what we can find inside. And when we put it on a time grapher, we can see the result actually, the amplitude is quite nice at 337. Obviously the rate is not good, losing 67 a second a day and a bit error as well. I like to have it below one or close to one millisecond on this uh, manual watch where you can adjust the bit error manually. So yeah, there is some work to do, but the amplitude is quite good, so let's check what we can find inside. Wow, that looks nice. I love chronograph calibers, especially this type of vintage chronograph caliber. Looks quite nice. You see there, column wheel, column wheel chronograph. So again, we can see a R sign as well on the bottom there, which is a sign from a, a Valjou caliber. And on this side, uh, so you open the chronograph from the front, like the, the dial normally come from the front, uh, but it was very hard to move and actually it was glued, like the, the, the case there around was fully glued. So yeah, that's not good. So I'm just gonna go all the way around just to lift up there the bezel. And you see it's, it's glue, yeah. I don't know why they've done that because actually it's fitting quite nicely, maybe just to make it a bit more watertight, but obviously this is not the purpose of these watches, this type of watch. So yeah, it's not a good, not a good fix to glue a, a bezel on a watch. Just gonna align the hand now and uh, gonna remove all the ends in the center. So the second uh, from the chronograph, the minute and the hour hands. This beautiful patina on, on the loom there. I love the loom color on his watch. Just using my Presto tool here. And I'm gonna manually remove there the two sub second. Yeah, that's it. Just gonna remove the case screw here so we can release the caliber and the dial from the case. Just gonna release the winding stem here. And now it just pops, you see like, you have like a pusher here. Yeah, there we go. Now the caliber is out of the case. I can remove the dial. Again, the dial is pretty worn out, but see a Vulcan Grand Prix. Uh, the, the dial is pretty worn out, but I love this type of uh, vintage watch. I, I found them very, like with a, a huge charm. Um, so yeah, I, I like to keep it like this. And on this side, gonna remove the hour wheel. And you see this caliber as well as kind of this gold finish on it. Obviously it's not gold, but yeah, it's uh, a different type of finish that's what you can see on the, on other calibers. And uh, just removing the power here. Inside the watch and we should see the balance wheel coming to a full stop when the power is uh, fully gone from this caliber.
We're seeing starting to slow down a bit. And there that's it. It's coming to a full stop. So no more power inside the watch. So we can start to disassemble, to disassemble the caliber by removing, obviously, this part, which is very fragile, the balance assembly. And you see that, 22. So actually, this is a, a Valjoux 22 caliber, a very, very famous chronograph, like vintage chronograph caliber. Uh, I already uh, worked on some, but I love, and what I love on this vintage chronograph caliber, it's the springs. Like you see, like all the springs that they use, they are like uh, obviously handmade at the time, and uh, they are shaped in a piece of metal. Yeah, it's not like on some more modern chronograph caliber, like uh, for example, a Landeron 48 or a Venus uh, 188, which are cheaper alternative. You will find a lot of uh, wires, you know, like the springs, it's like wires. And on these calibers, they are not at all like they are like a, a piece of metal uh, shaped uh, in whatever they need. And it's so nice. Like uh, it makes such a, a huge difference when you look at these this beautiful chronograph calibers. Just removing the operating lever there. Obviously, that's what connects the pusher to the column wheel here. So again, this is a, a column wheel chronograph like if we want a better quality chronograph, because it's not a cam, it's a colon wheel. Obviously, the feel is uh, nicer with a, a colon wheel chronograph, and that's what you had on this Valjou 22, 23, and uh, other Valjou caliber from this era. That were used, actually, like, for example, in this Vulcan, like, uh, for the Vulcan brand, that they were used in a lot of other brands, including some Patek Philippe were using some, obviously, reworked calibers, but the base was a, a, a Valjoux caliber on some of the chronograph. Just removing the brake here and all the parts from the chronograph. Removing the spring, you see again another spring here. And what I do every time I remove a part on a chronograph, obviously I put back the screw on the plate just to make sure I don't mix them up when I put it back together because each screw is different on a, on, a, on a chronograph and there is a lot of screws. Uh, so yeah, you don't want to mix them. And this is a colon wheel, the heart of the chronograph, the brain of the chronograph if you want. That will give the information when you push on, a, on one of the pushers to all the other parts of the chronograph to start, stop or, or reset the chronograph. We have the mini jumper spring here from the chronograph. Just removing the driving wheel there with a presto tool. There we go. Okay, so now that the chronograph is fully disassembled, I will start to disassemble the rest of the watch. So we have this big three quarter plate, you see, which is covering most of the parts underneath. Just gonna, here we go, lift it up. And underneath underneath this plate, we have a couple of parts that we will disassemble later. And there we have another bridge where we have underneath the escape and the fourth wheel. <laughs> You can see the caliber actually is not that dirty, some stains, but not a lot. I don't know when when was the last uh, service on this watch. And uh, there I remove all the wheels from the train of wheel. See, making the connection between the barrel to the pallet fork. Just move on a dial sign now. I'm going to disassemble the keyless work. Again, pretty, pretty standard, the keyless work on... Uh, underneath there and you will see again the springs on the keyless work as well are so nice it was a minute wheel here and you see the setting that's the setting lever spring that I'm taking out there and we have the yoke with a huge 
and very strong yoke spring. Not easy on this caliber actually to take the yoke because it's always an, under tension with this spring. That's it. And the last few parts with the waning stem that I'm just removing right now. And obviously all the parts we get clean. We put them later in a uh, basket for all the parts to get clean, including the jewels there, which is for the balance assembly. Obviously you see this watch is without shock protection. So it's quite an old watch uh, because he has a shock protection started to appear at the end, end of the forties. Uh, so yeah, this watch is uh, before, before that. Um, obviously because he has no, no shock protection. So yeah, this is quite a, a old caliber. I'm just picking all the jewels there to remove any dried up oil or grease and placing back the balance to make sure it's safe during cleaning. Just now going to disassemble the few parts which is under the three quarter bridge here. We first the crown wheel. See with this tiny screw there. A bit dirty underneath here. You can see some black spots. And we have the click here that I'm removing as well. Just leave the, the spring on the plate. Don't need to remove the spring. It will get clean. And now I disassemble the barrel assembly. Again, just to make sure everything is clean inside. Check the, the spring as well if it's in good shape. We saw the amplitude was quite good, so the spring uh, is probably in good shape. But again, just to make sure we clean, you see it's quite dirty inside. With like some very dark grease. You can see it now in my, on my finger coats. Just do a quick polish of the pivot on the wheels from the train of wheel. Okay, so now we're gonna place all the parts after uh, cleaning them a bit manually, polishing some of the parts. We're gonna put all the parts in baskets and they will go inside the cleaning machine. And the purpose is to remove any dried up oil grease, any, uh, any small like particle, anything which is inside the watch to have the part as clean as possible. And obviously after we're gonna put the movement back together and see at the end how well it run. Okay, so the cleaning first, we're gonna do a, put the parts through a, a cleaning solution. Then we are gonna put the parts through two steps of rinsing and we will finish by uh, drying the parts. I would like to, to use this opportunity to thank my existing patrons. So I have a patron account, you can find the link down below. So Thomas, Philip, Roger, Matt, Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Rune, Christian, Corne, Alan, David, Tony, Stephen, John, Tim and Gregory. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting me, supporting my channel, supporting my work. And again, if you want to join the team, you can go to my uh, Patreon account. You will find the link down below in the description and join one of the plans. It will help to support the channel. And as well, if you did not uh, register, if you did not subscribe to the YouTube channel, you can click on the subscribe button down below. You can click on a thumbs up if you like the, the video and it will help to promote this video and on the bell icon as well to get a reminder when I put a video every week so you will get a reminder any new videos that I put online. Okay, so now we're gonna start to reassemble the watch and I will start with the barrel, uh, with the mainspring, with the barrel assembly. And actually there I'm gonna put it manually. You see by hand, just turning ever so slightly inside the barrel, step by step. And we have a, a brand new, I don't know, not a brand new, but you see a fully clean mainspring inside the barrel assembly, placing the barrel arbor, and again, greasing to make sure everything is nicely lubricated inside. And now we can close the barrel, putting inside this tool, we're gonna put some pressure there on the top lid, and we close the barrel assembly. Gonna oil there, you see, using some red oil, which is a 9104, which is a medium viscosity oil, just to make sure like the 
friction is reduced to a minimum between the parts which are in contact metal against metal. I'm gonna oil as well, need to oil the joules, which is on the top of the balance, and for that I need to disassemble the balance, but this one was really, really stuck, so I had to use a small screwdriver to push on it there, and uh, detach the balance wheel from the balance cock, and now I can get access to this screw to disassemble there the cap jewel. You will see there. Totally different from a shock protected system, obviously. And here we go. Now I have a couple of parts, and here I have the cap jewel that I will put in uh, with a few other parts to treat it in epilam. That will help to retain the oil in a better spot. Just dry the part. Just gonna remove the epilam on a pivot point there of the escape and the pallet fork, escape wheel. And I'm gonna place back the cap jewel. So that's the first one, which is on the die side, which is a, an easy one. Just need to put uh, the screw in place. And with my automatic oiler, I will put a drop of oil from the other side. And I'm gonna reassemble the cap jewel on a balance cock there. So you will see, you see, like you need to put all the parts back together. Just press there because, yeah, this is quite a, a tight fit there between the parts. Just gonna put the part on top and try to align the holes. We're gonna put the screws just after that. Perfect, so now we can just tie them up. <laughs> and put a drop of oil again with the my automatic oiler there, right in the center of the jewel. And we can place back this beautiful balance wheel we see with this very fragile spring, the air spring there. Hopla, just jump, didn't go very far, but was already in position. And now I can secure with the screw here. Yeah, I'm just gonna place it back on a caliber just to check if the wheel and the spring, everything is in a, is moving, friction free, and the spring is in good shape. Yeah, you can see the spring is fully concentric, like. There is no ding on in on the mainspring, no bent. Just checking that it's flat. Yeah, it looks good. Perfect. So now that's done, we can start with the rest of the assembly. So gonna put a couple of parts under the bridge. You remember there it was a crown wheel and the click. Gonna lubricate and you're gonna see me and on a on a chronograph you use a lot of grease and oil because you will have a lot of parts which are in contact metal against metal. So you just want to make sure like to reduce wear and to reduce friction. That's all the proper lubrication is done on these watches. And that's why you need to maintain your watch once in a while because obviously this oil will dry up at one point and will not do anything anymore on the, on the, on the parts. Uh, so yeah, you need to, you need to send your watch for service once in a while. putting the click there by holding this uh, strong spring with another tweezer. And I'm gonna start to put the train of wheel together, starting by the escape, escape wheel, the force, And I'm gonna put the barrel in position now. 
I was reassembled, you remember, with the mainspring in it. Just gonna lubricate there the pivot point of the center wheel. We have this small bridge, you see, just keeping in position two of the wheel there. Just need to make sure everything is aligned there. You see, in the jewels. Perfect. Can secure the bridge here in position with the screws. And now we can put this big bring in position covering the rest, the rest of the parts, just checking, to make sure everything is aligned properly. You can see there, just very gently going to move the bridge around until it falls in position. There we go. On the pivot point of the wheels. And when it's in position again, gonna secure everything with the screws. So again, so this Vulcan, yeah, Vulcan uh, is a, a vintage brand, obviously, that uh, sadly disappeared, but it came back recently. And uh, actually, I did a watch uh, on the channel uh, a while back uh, from Vulcan, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a watch with, a, a very, uh, with an alarm, the Cricket. It's a very famous watch, and actually it's what uh, Vulcan is most famous for, for the Cricket watch that were used a lot by the... Uh, different presidents from uh, United States of America. So yeah, uh, that's what uh, their watch was. Uh, that's their uh, iconic model, if you want, with a caliber that was developed by them. By uh, by them, and uh, you see they made other watch as well, like uh, this uh, this chronograph. They made a lot of watch, obviously, uh, not with their own chronograph caliber because obviously they use this uh, Valjoux twenty two caliber. Uh, but yeah, that was. Uh, it was a, a nice brand uh, making a nice watch and a very innovative watch as well, like uh, with, uh, with the Cricket. Uh, but yes, sadly, again, it's one of the uh, brands that disappeared at one point and uh, that came back very recently with, uh, yeah, new watches uh, inspired as well by this vintage vintage model. Uh, but yeah, I, I love the, the Vulcan watch. They made some uh, very nice watches in the past. Uh, like, like for example, this uh, this chronograph, and again, this uh, caliber, like this Valjoux Twenty Two, is like, like probably one of the best quality chronograph caliber that you can add at the time during this period. Like probably end of the thirties, early forties for this one. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's, uh, it's they are great pieces. Just reassembling now the keyless work. And you see putting the setting lever spring in position using some grease here because there is see a big tension between the parts there with these big springs. Just checking everything is working fine. Yeah, looks good. And I can assemble the rest. Putting the cannon pinion, which is friction mounted there, so I need to use some strength just to pull it in position. There we go. It's a minute wheel, and we have a couple of intermediate wheel there. And a plate that will come and cover all these parts and keep them together. Perfect, I think we are done with the keyless work there. Just gonna check one last time if everything is working when we turn. Changing time, winding the watch. Yeah, that looks good. We can put the pallet fork in position. I'm just gonna 
align now the top jewels from this palette for cock on the palette fork. Make sure like you see there until the pivot point fall inside the jewel there. Up, oh, here we go, perfect. So now we can secure it. Gonna lubricate the palette fork after winding it. Uh, lubricate the exit jewel. Do it under microscope, so that's why I don't do it under the camera. And you can see there it's clicking nicely, so the power is coming to the palette fork. Let's put the balance and see if the movement went to start. Always a moment of tension when you fully disassemble a, a caliber. Yeah, you're never sure, like if you did not do anything wrong. Or if, uh, yeah, and when it starts like that, that's a big release, so that's good, yeah, perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick polish on the, on the, on the case, not a, not a hard one, but a very light polish. Again, because yeah, the color was a bit strange because like it looks like it was gold plated or it's like kind of a gold color on the case. Um, so yeah, just do a quick polish on it just to make it uh, nicer on the lugs everywhere on the case. Just gonna do the same as well on the, on the, on the bezel. Just do the underneath of the lug there. Same thing on the bezel, just a, a light polish again. Just to, to make it shiny. And we see the full result at the end. Obviously when the when we did the polish, we need to clean everything. And for this, I'm going to use this ultrasonic machine. We're going to put all the parts to get clean. And uh, actually, I have a discount for you for this ultrasonic machine. So I'll put a link down below in the description if you want to buy this uh, small ultrasonic machine, which is perfectly fine for watchmaking. Um, so I will put a link down below. Okay, so now that we have the base caliber fully running, basically we have a watch that keep time. We need to add a complication on this watch, which is a chronograph complication. So we want to have the watch that keep time and top of it, have a nice chronograph. So I'm starting by assembling the column wheel there. Again, like I said, that's the brain of the chronograph. And we'll see later on when we make the chronograph work, what the uh, column wheel is doing. And basically I'm gonna reassemble all the parts from the chronograph in the reverse order of the disassembly. Putting each part, putting the springs you see there putting the tiny spring. I love this spring, like I said. That's a minute wheel from the chronograph. And I'm gonna use and put this. I really don't like to put this screw on a chronograph. That's why I use, you see there's a, for this uh, spring there, it's a small screw. So I'm keeping it in my tweezer just to make sure it doesn't move. And with my other hand, I'm just gonna screw it a few turn. And that's it, now it's in position. The chronograph center wheels for the second. And I'm just gonna put this chronograph bridge there, you see with the two jewels. I need to align, need to be aligned with this uh, two wheels that I just put in position. There we go, perfect. You can see there as well on the bridge, it's, uh, even if it's not a, a Vulcan caliber, is uh, branded with the Vulcan name on it. Just checking that the wheels are turning freely. Yeah, it looks good. Just gonna grease there the column wheel, obviously, like I said, that's the brain of the chronograph that will see a lot of action. So yeah, everything needs to be greased and oiled properly on this, uh, on this wheel if you want to have a, a smooth and nice feel when you push on the pushers and uh, yeah that's a characteristic if you want of a, of a column wheel chronograph putting the brake here fabricating like the pivot point which is actually with the screw done with the screw there 
And again, another spring, and you see the shape of this spring, so nice. Gonna put this tiny screw there that keeps the spring in position. And again, oiling as well all the contact between the spring and the parts to reduce the friction to a minimum, and uh, that everything does what it's supposed to do with a minimum of friction. Gonna put the hammer here. So that's the uh, part that will come and uh, hit the arch shake cam on the minute wheel and the chronograph wheel just to reset the chronograph. So this is very important, you see, to lubricate these parts that will come on a hard wheel, a hard uh, cam, sorry, to reset the chronograph. We put uh, the operating lever there, that's where we'll when you push, we'll push on these uh, on these arms. When we use the pushers, so this is the one to reset, and this is the one to start and stop the chronograph. And you see here, I'm uh, gonna just unscrew this uh, huge screw there just to put the hook. Like you see, there is a hook at the end that will come on the column wheel to operate the column wheel actually and make the link between the pusher and the column wheel. And we'll see a bit later on again when we test the chronograph, what it does. And putting another spring here. Actually, this one is for the hammer. I'm just going to put a spring first. You see, that's a very tall spring. And I'm putting, arming it like against the hammer here. And another spring here, which is for against this hook from the operating lever. So you see, I'm trying to arm it there. So what I'm going to do again, just going to put the spring first. Secure it like and put it in position with a screw. And now I'm going to arm it against the hook there. Perfect, it's in position. And again, this spring has a very, very particular shape. Very well done. And you see there when a pusher look at the column wheel doing his job. And we see there's a, the brake on the center wheel coming on and off from the center wheel the chronograph wheel and now the reset and you see there i'm able to reset and the hammer come to hit the two wheels a minute and the chronograph wheel so so far so good on the chronograph i'm just putting this uh, small click there which is uh, to make a nice jump for the minute of the chronograph wheel Gonna put the chronograph driving wheel, which is directly connected to the wheel underneath on this extended pivot. Just put it on for right now, and you will see later on we'll have to adjust it. Uh, and we have to adjust it with the clutch, which is the part I'm putting right now with the clutch wheel on it. And again, that will this part will come in contact to the column wheel and be driven by the column wheel when you push on a button. Perfect. And again, the spring, the last one, I think, because yeah, that's a lot of spring on this uh, chronograph. Okay, you can see there's a wheel. 
uh, the driving wheel is much higher than the clutch wheel. So I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna press it in position to make them exactly the same height and engage together. You see there, nice, nicely engaging. And now they are, they are perfectly the same height. And these two will always stay in contact. And you see when I push here, the clutch is coming off from the chronograph wheel. And now we can reset and a hammer will come and hit the two wheels. Yeah, so the function of the caliber is perfect. We will just need to adjust it. We'll do it a bit later on. But first I'm gonna put the rest of uh, the watch, which is the hour wheel. Now we can put back the beautiful vintage. I love this patina on this uh, Vulcan Grand Prix. Just gonna put now, I'm just gonna release a bit the operating levers so that I can insert the pusher underneath. You see that I can now lift the pusher, lift the operating levers and put the pusher underneath. Yeah, now it's in position. I can again screw it back and the pusher will stay in position. Now, what I'd like to do is I like to put the hands when the when the caliber is back in the case. So like that as well, I can use the pusher to set the hands. Uh, so that, that's why I do it this way. Just place back now the, the, the dial and the caliber inside the case. Secure it with the case screw. So I put the first one. And then we put the second one. Then. Perfect. And I'm just gonna do a quick polish on the hand and what I really don't want to do is to touch a loom and the patina on this loom, which is beautiful. Just do a gentle polish on his blue hand just to make them a bit more shiny. And obviously we're gonna do all the hands, so the hour, the minute there. Gonna do the second hand from the chronograph. I like the teardrop at the end of this, uh, on one of the extremity of this uh, second hand from the chronograph. Just gonna do as well the sub, the hand from the sub dial there. So now I'm gonna place the hand back on the watch. So starting with the hour hand, just need to align at midnight. Gonna press it in position. Just gonna put now the minute hand and we can see the blue there, very like shinier than what it was. With a, a gentle polish on it. and the second hand. So what I like to do is, you see when I put the hand, I like to keep the reset button engaged for the hammer to be on the on the wheel. So like that I know the second hand doesn't move. And then I press it in position. So you see there, I'm just adjusting it to make sure it's perfectly on the zero mark from the chronograph. And, and if it moves, you see, up now it just move a bit. I will just realign it. And because I like to have my chronograph with the second turn perfectly on the zero. And now I press it in position. And you see there, perfectly on zero. And now when I do a reset, yes, it goes back perfectly to the zero position. So yeah, perfect setting on a second hand there. That's the second hand from the time, which is always running. Just put it in position and press it in position. And that's a minute hand from the chronograph. So again, this one, we want to align it perfectly to the zero position. So we're gonna do the same thing that what we did on a second hand from the chronograph. Align it perfectly. And when it, when it is, just gonna press it in position. 
And now under the microscope, I'm uh, checking like the teeth. If the engagement between the teeth is perfect, they need to engage 75% of the lens. And actually you see on the big side, it looks good there. The engagement is quite uh, nice. It looks like around 75% of the teeth are engaged. And on the small one as well, when we will start the chronograph, yeah, it looks okay as well, the, the depth. So we don't need to adjust anything. The last thing we need to check is we need to check the minute when it jump, if it's jumping uh, nicely. So you see there on the center, we have a, a teeth there coming and pushing this intermediate wheel. And we did not see any jump there on a the minute. And you see the spring on the, on the side, the jumper. It's not good. So I adjust it one time to see if you want to jump. Still doesn't jump, so I need to adjust it another time. Need to adjust the spring there, the, the jump spring, and see this time. Yes, perfect, we have the minute jump, so that's good. So let's check on the chronograph now. We're gonna let it run for a while and see if it's working nicely. We see the minute, yeah, perfect jumping. Beautiful, beautiful, I love this, uh, this chronograph and the side as well. It's quite, quite big for a vintage watch, so very nice. And actually, I will tell you at the end, but this watch will be for sale on my website. So yeah, if somebody wants to grab this watch, you are more than welcome. So yeah, and you see the reset? Perfect, perfect reset. So I can put now, I can put back the crystal on top of it. And look at the case as well with this uh, polish, uh, beautiful. And the crown was a bit loose, like uh, when I uh, wind the watch. So I'm gonna ref uh, fix the crown there inside the, the winding stem, just using some Loctite, some grid Loctite there. For sure, for like that for sure the crown will not move anymore. Just create fully inside the winding stem and place it back on the caliber and secure it with the screw there. Perfect. Just gonna demagnetize the watch just before we put it on a time grapher. But first, we'd like to tell you that I have my own website where I'm selling some of the watch that I restored on the channel, including this one. And uh, I will put a link down on the top right corner right, if you wanna go to my website. And uh, as well, if you have uh, some vintage watch that you want to send for a service, you can go and find my uh, contact detail if you want to send your watch for a service. Like for example, if you want to ser service a vintage chronograph, I will be very happy to work on your watches. And you see the result there. So it's not perfect yet. I need to beat some adjustment. I need to let it run for 48 hours and I will adjust the rate, but it's much better. The amplitude went up, the bit error went down. I can adjust the bit error as well to get it just below one. Uh, but the uh, watch is running very nicely. And after 48, hour, 48 hours, you run even better. So I really like this restoration. The watch will be for sale on the top right corner there. And I see you for my next video. Bye bye.